Okay, guys, so let's restart from here, but basically don't think that I'm gonna do much algebra. I'm not a big fan of doing algebra. I like a lot, a lot more to do the procedure and I don't have a calculator. So uh, let's look at this. So it looks like last time we were in step three at minus five log one minus 0 0.2 T. Zero to t equal one equal v over one hundred zero five. Okay, so let's see. Looks like this this is problem what thirteen nineteen. Okay, so we have this. I'm just gonna do uh basically to finish the procedure to say now. We need to do step four. Which is solve. So again, I don't have a calculator, but since this is the one of the logs, the way I will solve this probably, probably I will say log one minus 0 0.2 T zero to one will be equal to minus b over 500 b initial zero to v final so this will give you log of what uh where did the minus begin 500 i'm moving from this side to the other side and then so it will give you log of one so it would be 0 0.8 minus log of one would be equal to minus V final over 500. We should give you that V final equal to negative 500 times log of 0 0.8 minus log of one of v final would be equal to nearly 500 log of 0 0.8 over one, whatever that is, okay? I don't care that much about the numerical application. All right, so basically we have done, now you should know how to find the uh, whatever position or the velocity. If you have accelerations that are constant in function of velocity, in function of position or in function of time, no? Okay, so for the assignment, you are more than welcome to use any software that you want to do the integrations, okay? But there's a minimum that you need to know, okay? About integrations. All right, so, all right, this generally I do it, sometimes I do it in this chapter, sometimes I do it later on. Let's do it this chapter, okay? So we're gonna look at the, parabolic motion. Again, all this stuff is really a review from uh, from physics, but I don't care. So over here, let's look. What is the parabolic motion? X position. So by definition, what would be the parabolic motion? Something like this, no? So over here, first thing we're gonna assume is that A is constant. All right, 
Second thing, let's say we have an initial velocity at firing or whatever you want with an angle theta. So that if A is constant, the only force being applied, let's say to a particle over here is what is gravity. Okay, so some of you re might remember the equations by memory, but I'm not as good as you are. So I just over here from the figure. What is the acceleration? Is it any acceleration or the x direction? Look at the figure, okay? I'm not asking. No, is it any acceleration on the y direction? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you G, no? Okay, now we know the equations A equals to dv dt. So if you want to find the velocity, what do you need to do? You need to integrate, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would be the velocity? Let's say of a particle over here. Everything is on the figure. What should be the x velocity at the beginning? Zero. Really? So if it's zero, then where is it going? So what, what would it be? What would be the x component of the velocity? What would be the x component? B naught cosine theta. What would be the y component of the velocity? B naught sine theta. Okay. But don't forget, this is also equal to the inter integral of the acceleration, no? In this case, what is the acceleration for us? G. So then, what am I missing here? A what? Plus AG plus or minus MG? What did you say? Plus AG? AT. AT. So, and what is A? Okay, but A, if you throw something up, gravity is going to start to work against, no? Let's use common sense, no? So, if you integrate minus G, you get minus GT, no? Okay? So, next, you know that V equals dr dt or ds dt, whatever you want to call it. So from here, if you know the velocity and you want to find the position, what do you need to do? You need to integrate the, the velocity, no? Okay, so look at the figure. Everything should be on the figure, so. All right, so what should be the R vector, which is really X and Y? What should it be? What should be the X? All right. What do you need to do? Integrate V with respect to T. So what is the integral of this component with respect to T? V naught cosine theta T. I mean, you see, it's not racking, I mean, not asking anything complicated, okay? If it's complicated, I write it down straight. If it's not complicated. Now, what should be the second one then? Okay, but what about the first term? Minus g t square over two plus b naught sine theta t. Yes. Okay. Well, I can say here or 
I can just write x equal to v naught cosine theta t and y equal to minus gt squared over two plus v naught sine theta t. Okay, so really with this equation, it's sufficient to solve any problem you want to parabolic motion. But generally, you will write this equation. So in these figures, what do you have? Y is in function of what? Y, you, this plot is what? Y in function of X, okay? In this equation, Y is X and Y are in function of what? T. So what can we do in order to rewrite Y in function of X and not T? <coughs> Absolutely. So what we can do is we can take this top equation here. We solve for T. T will be equal to what? T will be equal to X over V naught cosine theta. <clears throat> so as you say, the next step would be to substitute in A into the Y equation. Which is what? Y equal to minus G over 2. x over v naught cos theta square plus v naught sine theta t, which is x divided by v naught cos theta. So we do basic algebra, we get y equal to minus g divided by 2 v naught square cosine square theta x square plus V naught tangent theta x. No, because sine sine divided by cosine is tangent. The V naught cancel out. And the V naught cancel out, absolutely. You're absolutely right. So tangent theta x. Okay, so let me just rewrite it over here so I can y equal to minus g divided to b naught square cosine square theta x plus tangent theta x. Uh, x squared in that first term. You are right. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? This so would be x squared. I have it here, x squared. So basically, in this one, what is? This is the equation of the figure that we did before. Let me just redo it over here, a small one. x and y. So basically, this is the equation of this curve, no? All right, so Johnny, in this type of problems, they ask you two things. 
One, they ask you to find what is the maximum range, which is which actually corresponds to what? To the maximum distance that you can throw or fire something, no? Would be the X max. And what is the other thing Jalid is gonna ask you? What is the maximum height that you can reach by doing that? Okay, so which one you wanna do first? You wanna do the maximum range or the maximum height first? Maximum range, okay, so maximum range. So a uh, range, which is the maximum distance. Okay, so let's see what we can do from mathematics. Now it just becomes mathematics. So, okay, what do we know about the maximum range? What do we know? Okay, perfect. So maximum range, uh, we have Y. Equals zero. So that will mean what? We mean that minus G divided by two V naught square cosine square theta X square plus tangent theta X equal to zero. Okay, or well, I can rewrite this as tangent theta x would be equal to g over 2 v naught square cosine square theta. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. We know that tangent theta is what? sine theta over cosine. So this would mean what? That this cosine will cancel with one of these squares, no? Yeah? So I need to go to the next page. Oops. I need to go to the next page, so this will give us what? This will give us sine, ah, and also the x will cancel the x squared, so basically we can have what? Uh, sine theta will be equal to what? Uh, g over two v naught square. Cos theta x. times x. Okay, so now we have x, no? Okay, so we can solve for x. So we can say x over here equal to x max equal to the range, should be equal to what? Should be equal to two V naught square cos theta sine theta divided by G, okay? I'm not gonna go, probably you found this stuff, the, this one trigonometric relation that says sine two theta equal to two sine theta cosine theta, but forget about that. That's to me good enough, no? Okay, so the maximum range will be given by this. Okay, guys, so you saw that I did not memorize anything, no? We wrote down the equation and we use common sense. 
Now, let's say now we want to find the maximum height, which is h equal w max. So what can what what do you know at that location? The what? The velocity is zero, really? So it's not moving. That's it. It gets to the high points and oh wait. All right. You are, it is one thing that you're right. One of the component is zero, but uh Okay, so basically what you find over here is that at the top, if you want either, this is a straight line, no? Okay, so yeah, you could say the y is zero. You could use that one, what else could you use? Yes. Correct. So you can either use here the fact there's two things you can use. Let me redo here a small figure very quick. There's one that is a little bit faster than the other one, but basically if there is no friction or anything, this location here should be equal to what? One half. Correct. Should be one half of the maximum distance. Or the other one here that you could say is that this is just the velocity, no? Yeah? Okay. So let's try, I mean, this one involves just a little bit less algebra. So let's say use x equal x minus divided by two at, uh, Maximum height. Okay, this would be here y max. Okay, so we have the equation here y equal to what? Minus g. over two V naught square cosine squared theta X square plus tangent theta X, no? Okay. Where, what do we know? X, so we're gonna have here. At Y max equal H, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have minus G divided by two V zero square cosine squared theta. What should be X mass over two? Should be V naught square cosine theta sine theta divided by G no? So this term over here is X max divided by two and I need to put the square, no? Did I forget the square? Yeah. Plus tangent theta. of V naught square cos theta sine theta over G. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna have. We're gonna have Y max equal to H, 
what are we going to over here? So let's see, we have, this is going to cancel with the cosine. Then what do we have? We have minus VZO square now. So we have the square, this would be to the fourth. Sine square theta. Divided by two G, correct. Now remember here that this would be sine theta over cosine theta. All right. Plus over here is no minus sine. Plus will be this will cancel then the cosine. So plus V naught. sine squared theta over G. So basically at the end, what we're gonna have, Y max equal to H <coughs> will be equal to what? This is equal like minus one half plus one, no? Hold on, write down the last thing. So it will be equal to V zero square. sine squared theta over G. What's your question? Uh, what happened to the V zero square? What do you mean, what happened? Oh, this one over here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm forgetting squares. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Would it be over 2G? Uh, over 2G, so yes. It's minus one half plus one, yeah. How did you get that final answer? From the if you factor out the V0 squared sine square over G, it gives you minus one half plus one, which is one half. Okay. All right, so let's do problems. Okay, so let's go open the book. Okay, so let's see, I wanna look for one type of problems to divide the equation, that's not what it is. Oh, 13, I want to go, okay. I'm going too fast. 12, 12, 12, 13, okay. That's what we did the other day, I guess. All right, this is what we've been doing. Okay, this kind of, this one looks good, but you're probably not gonna get it the first time. This one looks okay as well. Let's see if we want it a little bit easier. No one looks okay as well, but let's see. Uh, all right, let's look at this one here. Okay, it has the aircraft, so. All right, so let's look at 1375. So I'm gonna write down on my notes 1375. I'm gonna do a figure, so let's see. A pilot wants to drop server markers at remote locations in the Australian outback. If it flies at a constant velocity, V naught equal to 40 meters per second at an altitude H of 30 meters and the marker is released with zero velocity relative to the plane at what horizontal distance D 
from the desired impact point should the market be released? Okay. So let's see if I do here. <coughs> right, so this one and V not, I'm kind of copying a kind of a similar figure. Okay, D. So we need to find D. Right. <coughs> and this will be H over here. Okay, so my question over here is that we need to derive the equation of motion. So the reason I selected these points for one reason, okay? Because I want to do, I want to change something and I'm going to give you the choice. Let's say that we calculate it from here. Okay, so there's only one reason that I'm doing this, okay? Okay, so what would be the equation of motion of this curve over here? What would be the acceleration? Geo energy, perfect. What would be the velocity? At the very top of the curve. And it's, everything is on the figure. Zero, um, not for X and zero for Y. Really? Zero? It's not moving on the Y? No, I mean, everything is what we did before, not? Okay. And then finally, what would be R? which is x, y. Now I said we need to be careful. What would be the x? Same as before. I mean, just follow the same procedure as before. So it would be what? V not t. Negative gt squared over 2. Really? What is the origin over here of our reference frame? Yeah? No? We need to move here the H, no? Okay. So Basically, what I'm doing all this stuff is that it's not a matter of memorizing anything. It's a matter to understand the process, no? Okay, how long did it take us to do this? One, two, three lines, no? Okay, so now basically it's like before, see what we have. This is equivalent to writing down x equal v not t, y equal minus g t squared over two plus h. So here, bad luck. I mean, I would have to do a little bit more work, but D will correspond to what? We correspond to the to the X max if you want, no? So basically we need to find the equation in function of X, no? So what can we do? We can do as before. We can say from these equations, T will be equal to what? X or V naught. So,
substituting t equal x over v naught into y equation is going to give us what? y would be equal to minus g over 2 x over v naught squared plus h, which means that y would be equal to minus g over 2 v naught squared x squared plus h. Now, oops, uh, I don't know. So I don't want to read this. I want to put this up here. So at this point over here, let's say at point at point A, which is over here, what do we know? Okay, x equal d and y equal zero, no? Okay, and we know v naught, we know h. So let me go to the next page. So this will give us what? Uh, this will give us basically that, I mean, if you want, let me write it down, y equal to minus g over two v naught square x square plus h. So this will mean that zero will be equal to minus g over two v naught square d square plus h. This will mean that d square would be equal to two v naught square uh, h divided by g, or d would be equal to the square root of two v naught square h over g. Where we know that v naught I think was equal to be equal 40 and h equal to 30 and g would be 9.81, no? So if you want to do the numerical application, you can do it. But like I told you, I don't really care about the numerical applications. OK, so if you want to do it, you can do it. But I don't really care. All right, let's do one more. But this time, you select it. Try to select something that does not require a lot of calculations, okay? I don't know which one you want to do, this one here, the golf one? Oh, it was one that I said was maybe a bit more difficult, no? Uh, what about I try to do, look at this one? 1385? Just because it's this curve over here. Okay? I mean, we can do another one if you want. I mean, like, you want to look at this, 1384 or 1385? They're about the same. 35? Okay. They are basically the same as this one, but this one we'll be doing later on. Let's do 84, okay? He has some more, he has some stuff, some implications that I want you to, to think about. Okay, so do the figure. And I do the figure on my side. So again, I don't have the solutions of this. So don't ask me for values because I don't have any value. 
A projectile is launched at so V zero equal to 10 meters per second. Uh, from the sloping so the angle, alpha equal 80 degrees. What is alpha? Ah, oh, okay, okay, I see. And then because I saw a 30 degrees order, okay. Okay. Okay, so mathematically speaking, there's multiple ways to do these problems, but there's one definitely that's gonna require less algebra than another one. So everything has to do about where do you choose your, and uh, everything will depend on how you choose your reference frame. In this problem, it's not given to you. So how will you select your reference frame? Yes. So what what would what would be the origin? First, let me know what would be the origin. Is it's not that much the difficulty. What would be the origin? Okay, perfect. That's fine. So one, well, let's go this point here. Oh. Now, what about the direction of the current systems? Basically, you have two choices: to take the normal one, no, horizontal, vertical. What could be the other option? You take this one along the slope and this one perpendicular to the slope, no? Okay. So if you do this one, then your range will be equal to the X max. But if you take this one, your X will not be the, the, the R, no? So which one do you think is better? Which one? The one that is normally vertically or the one that is tilted along the surface? Okay, Go ahead and do it. Let's see what you do. Yeah, don't look at me. I'm not gonna give you the answer. So take a gamble and, and write down the equation of motion. I don't think the answer is going to be at the red room either, but. Well, there is one thing I'm not telling you about. When you do the selection, look at the G, okay? I know what I'm doing. I forgot to put something on that figure. Uh, I think it was an angle. What was the angle that was 30 degrees on the figure? Yeah, 30 degrees. Is this one here again.
Okay, so what I want to know is which reference frame did you use? That's all I got. So which one did you pick? Okay. Uh, if you do this, how many components is G going to have? Right. So G is one direction. Maybe you need to achieve one direction. The one direction is G point. No, we will be G point. G will be pointing this way. I don't know. Does, is that a straight line down? So which one did you pick? Along the surface, another tablet. Which one did you pick? You need to get it. Which reference we need to pick? Let's so that. Yes. So that for lines, particularly that sort of which one of those? We've got it. So I'm going to go. So this is the launch here. I don't know what is the reference frame. Run the reference frame. Run the So what did you put your friends when you use? Okay. Okay. So obviously happens what happens most of the time is that there is nothing wrong if you select the rotated. Okay. So if you do the rotated, you have here the Y's, and along this surface would be the X. But what is something that you are all of you forgetting is that if you take that reference frame, the G is going to have two components, no? Mm -hmm. One on the X, one on the Y. So if you want to go that route, you can do it that way. It's not a problem at all. Okay? But this problem is a lot easier if you put the vertical over here, like the Y going up and the X going to the right. To my opinion, okay? So, how much time we have? All right, so let's do it, okay? Anyways. Okay, so let's say, like, so let's say that I use uh, my reference frame, this one over here. Y and X. So basically, what does that mean? You will have A, if we do the same process as before, A it will be equal to what? Zero, negative G, no? Okay. V will be equal to what? What is that called? Alpha minus 30 degrees? Okay, so it should be 80 minus 30, no? Yeah. So let's say, can we say theta is equal to 80 minus 30 degrees? Yes. Is that okay? So what would be the component? It would be V naught cos theta, no? Okay. Now what would be the Y component? It would be minus GT plus B not sine theta, so nothing changes over here. And then we will have what? R equal X and Y, that would be equal to what? B not cos theta T minus GT square over two plus B not sine theta T. Or 
x will be equal to v naught cosine theta t, y equal to minus g t square over two plus v naught sine theta t. Okay, so this is the same that we did before, okay? Nothing has changed. And nothing is gonna change again. Uh, so let's say then, uh, taking from the first equation, we find that T will be equal to X D naught cos and theta. and substituting into y equation. What do we get? We get y equal to, to what? Uh, minus g over two v naught square cosine square theta times x square plus tangent theta x. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I okay. I thought it was at the top, but it's not at the top. So y x over here. Let's see. Really doesn't it doesn't change anything, but over here. This is 30 degrees. And this is R over here. Uh let's call this point here B. Or A, we will have a point A, and we know this is okay. Now, think about mathematics. So, we have here this curve over here. This is our y of x. How can we find a? What is a mathematically speaking? What is what is this problem mathematically? Yes, go ahead. Perfect. So in other words. This point corresponds to the intersection of this curve over here that we just found out the equation. Now we need to find out what is the equation of the black line of the surface, no? Yep. So next, if you want. Uh, next. Let's find the equation of the slope. Which is what should be the form? Y equal to what? Minus AX, no? Mm -hmm. It's going through the origin, should be the result. So what should be the slope? What would it be? What should be the question of that line? Negative what? 
Correct. So the slope will be the tangent will give you the what is the tangent? How much is uh, going up with respect to how much is going there? No. Okay. So the slope so will be basically be y slope. Let's go right here. Y sub s will be equal to minus tangent of thirty times x. So let's see, what can we do next? So the point A is located at the intersection of the two curves. Okay. So that what does that mean? You need to have y will be equal to y of the slope, no? Which this will be equivalent to say what? Minus g over two v naught square cosine squared theta x square plus tangent theta x will be equal to minus tangent of 30 X. Okay, so what are we trying to find out here? Maybe I should have said that before. In the problem we're trying to say, what is X is what we're trying to find R, no? Oh, no, no, that's not what it is because what should be the relation of this? What should be X? So basically, say that again, maybe you're right. Uh, so basically, let's see the cosine, let's look at this one, will be yeah, so basically we'll have that Sine 30, okay, let's do that on the next line. Let's, let's first continue for here for one second. So this will give us what? Minus G over two, B naught square cosine square theta x square plus tangent theta plus tangent thirty x equal to zero. This will give you what? You can factor by x of minus g over two v naught square cosine squared theta x plus whatever this value is over here, tangent theta plus tangent 30. equal to zero.
Okay, so then we have to go to it. I don't want to go to the next page. So above equation, is satisfied when what? When is this equation satisfied? Okay, when x equals zero or when term, when is gonna be the other case when this is satisfied? When the terms within the brackets is equal to zero, no? Or when term in brackets is equal to zero. Okay, so what is, what would that be? Would be good if we had values, but we don't have values. So this will mean that minus g over two v naught square cosine square theta x plus tangent theta plus tangent thirty degrees equal to zero. So this will mean that x equal to two v naught square cosine squared theta times tangent theta plus tangent 30 divided by g. But this is not the answer, no? So at point A, let's say point A is over here. What do we know? This will be X. This will be R, no? Yep. So what is the relation we can find? between X and R. So we'd be, the best one we need to do cosine of 30 would be equal to X over R, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, so finally we'll have R would be equal to X divided by cosine cosine 30 or R will be equal to what? 2 V naught square cosine square theta tangent theta plus tangent 30 divided by G Post 30. I mean, this problem would be a lot easier if we start putting values, no? But since I don't have a calculator or anything, so. Did you follow the process that we did in order to find the solution? Okay, I know the expression at the end doesn't look pretty at all, no? But, uh... Did you understand the process that we did? Okay. So, have a good weekend. Okay. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to start anything in eight minutes, okay? So, there's one assignment for next week. I'm probably going to assign one next week more about this, okay? Just about finding the equations. Yeah. All right?
Oh, I was just... Yeah. Yeah.